And I just gave him some more because I dropped some on the rug. Hey, boo! What is going on with you, boo? Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. Guys, this is so crazy. It's about 10.45 a.m. right now. I'm in the kitchen. I just looked outside and I saw that fat blue jay, the fat blue jay from the other day. And the first thing I thought of is the cat. And there's the cat. The blue jay and the cat are friends. I have not seen that fat blue jay until right now, and the cat is with it. Look. There's the blue jay. And the cat's watching it fly around. This is so crazy. It's like an interspecies friendship. There's a blue jay. And that's what it does. It like flies around this cat. And I should also mention that this is the first time that I'm seeing this cat on my patio chair. You know, see, that's, I looked outside and that's what I saw. I saw the blue jay on. Look at this cat. It's like chattering toward the blue jay. And the blue jay's having a really good time. It's just like flying back and forth from the house to the garage. And the cat's having a good time too. I'm going to zoom out so maybe you could see the blue jay better. So it's on top of, like it's just, it's flying all around. See? It's like swooping, swooping down. That cat better stay off the table. See? Blue Jay's on the tip of the garage. This is what it does. It flies around this cat. Every time I see this cat, I think of like a desert. I think because of the color of the cat, it's like a reddish brown color. Part of me thinks its name is Savannah. See, see the, there's the bird on top of the, oh, it just flew the top of the window here. It's flying back and forth. Okay, is the cat gonna leave? It almost reminded me of like a cheetah there, the way it was moving. So Boo was watching the whole thing from his room. When I walked into his room, his tail was all big. And I just followed him here to see if we could get a better look at that cat. I'm kind of feeling like the cat's name might be Cheetah. But I'll have to see the next time I see the cat what it says about that. I kind of like to let all the cats name themselves which is what I did with Stella, Simba, Splash, and Boo. I kind of let them tell me what their name is. And I know that sounds strange, but like the kittens were the first two to have names. And when I saw Simba, I was like, he looks like a little baby tiger. He always reminded me of a little baby tiger. But I didn't want to name him Tiger or Tigger or anything like that. That wasn't his name. Like, it didn't fit him. And then Simba, that just fit him. You know, from The Lion King. 
and um, the name Simba fit him. And then with Splash, he looked like he was splashed with paint. And the name fit him also. He was like cool with it. So Simba and Splash were the first two. And then Stella took a while longer to get her name. But she was named after a family member um, because of her personality, behaviors, and the way she raised her kittens. She was very strict and territorial with them, which was exactly how the family member named Stella was territorial with her uh, children and grandchildren. So that was easy. Even now, like six or seven years later, after Stella has her name, she'll still do things and it'll be like uncanny how similar she is to uh, her ancestor Stella because like the way she has to always taste the raw cat food when I make it, that's exactly what Stella would have done. Stella loved food. She loved cooking. She loved uh, eating, right, Stella, just like you. And she always wanted to know what was going on outside the house. So she'd be peeking out the windows and you know, she's kind of nosy the same way Stella's nosy. So they have a lot of personality traits that they share. And while Boo's running around the house trying to get a better view of the cats outside, I'll tell you how he got his name. So Boo came to the back door one day and I looked out the back door and his eyes were all big and he looked like he was afraid. And this was like, you know, um, months and months before. This was like almost a year before I started the Boo Day series when he showed up at the back door all scraped up. This was quite a while before that. And um, I'll never forget looking out the back door and seeing Boo sitting there and his eyes were all wide and he looked like someone had just said boo to him. Like he was all like afraid. And you know, he was Stella's boyfriend and a term of endearment for a boyfriend or a girlfriend is boo. So I was like, wow, that's such a perfect name for him because he's Stella's boo. And you know, he's also a black cat, like a Halloween cat. And what do you think, when you think of Halloween, you think of like boo and you know, being scared. And you know, he looked like someone said boo to him. I was like, wow, that's his name. That name is so perfect for him on so many levels. So that's how Boo was named Boo. Because he's Stella's Boo. Right, Stella? Boo, did the cat come back? Did the cat come back? I am so freaked out at how I looked outside, saw the fat blue jay, and I was like, oh, I wonder if the cat's there. And then the cat was there. I mean, to me, that's like proof that that blue jay and that cat are friends. It's 8, 12 a.m. and I just looked outside and saw this. So the geese had their babies. I'm zoomed in as far as this camera will go. It looks like there is two babies. Some years the geese have a lot of babies, like there'll be like 12 babies. And this year it looks like there's just two. I don't know if something happened to the rest of them or this is just a small family. This is the first, um, this is the first time I'm seeing baby geese this year. My first gosling sighting. Usually I see them when they're much smaller than that. So I don't know where they've been.
It's 7 a.m. and today for breakfast, the cats are gonna try this Boss Cat frozen roll entree for cats. And this is the chicken recipe. So they've tried the turkey recipe in the past and they liked it, um, some more than others. So they're gonna try the chicken recipe right now. And that's what it looks like inside the package. Not very appealing. So this has been defrosting in the refrigerator for about 24 hours. And then it's been here on the counter for an hour just to try to um, further soften it. I'm going to take this downstairs and measure it out and give it to the cats. Here's what the food looks like inside. And the inside is still like semi-frozen. So I've kind of just scooped out chunks that I put on the cat's plates. And I'm going to have to mix in some water and kind of I'll make a pate out of it. Maybe that'll help unfreeze it. Here's what it looks like after I mix in some water and kind of squash everything down. And I'm going to put a few crunchies on top just because that's how the cats get their food. And we'll see if they like this. Okay, here we go. It's something brand new for them, so I don't know if they're going to like it. Be nice. It might be a little bit too cold. Stella gonna choose her plate. Okay, you take that plate, Stella. There goes Splashy. There's your plate. Here, Boo. There's your plate, Boo. Simba, are you eating? Here, Simba. Yep. Okay, you eat that, Stella. Everybody eat. Everybody eat their food. The goose trying the food. Oh, he's eating the crunchies. Simba, what are you doing? Simba wants some dried sardines on his. So Boo's eating his. Simba's eating his. I had to put some dried sardines on it. Stella's eating hers. I had to put some freeze-dried liver on it. And there's Splash. He's under the chair and he's eating his. He had to get some dried sardines also. So this is Splash's plate. This is what he ate. Maybe half of it. This is Stella's plate. She only ate a portion of it and Simba's eating some of it. This is Simba's plate. He ate part of his. And this is Boo's plate. Boo went upstairs. He probably wants to eat the rest of this upstairs because that's what he does. Overall, this was not the biggest hit with the cats. They left a good part of their meal, but the food is still really, really cold. So I'm going to leave it here. And then I'll come back later and I'll see who ate what. Hopefully Simba will not gorge himself on all the food. It's about 6.45 p.m. right now and the cats are having more of the Boss Cat chicken pate for dinner today. And one thing I do have to mention is that this is the freshest looking commercially made raw cat food um, that I've ever seen. Like compared to Primal Raw and Nature's Variety Instinct Raw. This does not have a gray appearance. Um, it has a really fresh appearance. And um, someone eventually came and ate all of the leftover food. So the cats finished about half of their breakfast. And then over the course of the day, they went back and they finished the rest of the food. So when I cleaned up the plates a little while ago, all the plates were clean. So uh, it seems that they did like it. So here's Boo. He's eating his food. What I did was I opened a packet of the Fortiflora and I sprinkled a little Fortiflora on everyone's plate and they're eating it happily. So here's Boo. There's Simba. Here's Stella. And here's Splash. Come back, Splash. So Fortiflora is a probiotic um, that's like liver flavored for cats. Stella um, was prescribed it in the past when she had um, like some vomiting and diarrhea. And uh, I gave it to Ditto when Ditto was on antibiotics because when you're on antibiotics, you always want to take a probiotic uh, to uh, counteract the negative effects of the antibiotic as far as um, beneficial bacteria in the digestive system goes. So uh, I still have a few boxes of it since uh, Ditto passed away. And um, so every 
now and then, like occasionally the cats get it. They don't get it with every meal, but if, um, if, if nobody wants to eat something. So like when I first gave them this food for dinner, they all kind of backed away from it. Then I put the Fortiflora on it and then they showed more interest. So sometimes Simba likes dried sardines on it. But then I said, uh, they haven't had the Fortiflora in a while. So let's, let's see how they do with that. So Simba's eating splashes now. So the cats got weighed this morning. Boo would not let me pick him up. He literally like kept walking around the house, walking around the house, walking around the house so much that I was getting dizzy just trying to, um, you know, get him so he would stand still and I could pick him up, but he didn't want anything to do with it. But I was able to weigh Stella and Simba and they weigh the same as they did last week. So I think in order to start seeing greater weight loss with them, I'm going to have to cut out crunchy time or drastically reduce it. It's 7.20 a.m. I just got out of the shower and I sat down to check some emails on my phone. And this is what happens. This still happens when I get out of the shower. Stella lays on my legs. She's very happy right now. She's been laying here probably around 10 or 15 minutes. But I gotta get up, Stella. Stella, I gotta get up. I gotta start my day, okay? Stella, I gotta start my day. Hey, Stella. It's about 8 a.m. Here's Boo. He's hanging out here on the play rug with all the grass. There are two containers of cat grass that have seen better days, so I definitely need to plant more cat grass. I'm just about to go for a walk right now because it is supposed to rain this afternoon starting around noon or 1 p.m. And the other day, I don't know if you could see it, but I dug out my old fitness tracker watch. This is one of the original uh, Garmin fitness trackers from like five years ago. It's quite old right now. Um, but I've been using it for a few days. I've been getting in my 10,000 steps a day. And I'm just about to head out for a walk. Um, so I can do a few thousand steps right now this morning. So um, here's Boo. I'll be back in a little bit, Boo, okay? And then you, you'll get brushed and you'll get your breakfast. And there's Stella and there's Splash. And I hear a bunch of landscaping noise outside. So it seems like other people want to get out early today also and just get stuff done.
Good morning, Simba. It is 9.15 a.m. I just got back from my walk. I was only going to do 20 minutes, like one mile, but then I just felt really good when I hit the 20 minute mark, the one mile mark, and I was like, I'll do two miles. And then when the two mile mark hit, I was like, I'll do three miles. And I actually could have just kept going, but it's already after nine and I gotta get the cats fed and I gotta get my day started. But it's about 70 degrees, the air is cool, and it's just really refreshing outside. It was so nice to get out and take a walk. And right now, all the rose bushes are in bloom and I wanted to film some of them. They're all a little bit kind of wet and droopy because we got so much rain last night. It's about 7 a.m. I'm here with Stella, Simba, and Boo. And I have a bag of dried crickets. So in the past, I tried to uh, give the cat some dried crickets. I bought some at Tractor Supply. Uh, there was a bag of dried crickets um, that you feed the chickens. And I know how much Simba loved crickets when the cats were living outside. So I bought them and I thought the cats would like to try them. Well, the cats did not want anything to do with them. When I opened the bag of crickets, I mean, they just smelled really pungent. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I would go near these either. So what happened was like a week or two ago, I was in a local organic market. And one of the things that they sold was cr dried crickets for human consumption. So these are human grade, like food grade dried crickets. Um, they had it in like their bulk food section. And um, so they sold these by the ounce because they're super, super light. And I think I bought like... I don't even know if this is an ounce, but I bought it for the cats to try. These have no smell at all, like no bad pungent smell. So I thought these are definitely very different than the other crickets uh, that I bought for the cats. And maybe they would like to try these. So I'm going to give them each a few today. I'm really kind of grossed out as I'm like holding this bag. Like I don't even want to touch them. Like So I'm going to just kind of put some on little plates for them. I'm gonna just open the bag and just try to put it in. They had like a scoop. So they had them in like a glass jar and you scooped them out. So Simba looks like he's interested. Maybe the cats will like these. Maybe these will be like an all natural crunchy for the cats. Okay, so here's a plate. This plate is by Simba. <laughs> Stella's ready. This is what Stella does when she gets her crunchy plate. She always claims it. She puts her paws on it and then she usually sits on it. She's gonna sit on it. Yep, that's what she does. She says, this is my crunchy plate. And Boo's waiting too. There, here's Stella. There you go, Stella. Oh my gosh, guys. Oh my gosh, they're all trying them. What? They actually smell pretty good in, oh, they actually smell pretty good in the bag. Wow, Simba just ate all of his. Did Boo eat his? I just, I just dropped some on the rug. So Simba ate all of his, he ate all of Stella's, and I just gave him some more because I dropped some on the rug. Hey, Boo! What is going on with you, Boo? This is yours. This is yours. So Simba really likes these, and I thought he would because he was the cricket hunter when the cats were living outside. And remember, Simba's the bug hunter. Is Boo gonna eat them? Splash just showed up. Oh, Boo's eating them too. Wow.
Really, you eating them, but he's like spitting them out at the same time. I don't, what are you doing, boo? You don't like them? Do you like them or you don't like them? Simba likes them. Eat that splash. Do you like them? Is Splash gonna like them? Simba's waiting. Simba says, if you don't eat them, Splash, I'm gonna eat them. You have to remember, Splash is afraid of new foods. So Splash usually uh, runs away from new food. So it's good that he's at least sitting there. So he's thinking about eating them. Boo, I gotta get something to clean up your mess here. I just gave more to Boo. And Stella looked like she wanted to try some, so I gave her a plate with some more. And Simba, Simba's just inhaling them. Splash walked away from his plate. I have to clean up the cat grass. The cat grass is looking really old. So Stella doesn't want it either. I wonder if they taste like fish because Simba loves fish and Stella usually does not like any kind of fish snacks. Whenever there's any kind of like uh, freeze dried fish snacks, Stella does not like them. I think Boo's not a fan either. I think he thought they were crunchies and then once he started eating them, you know, that's why he spit that one out. Well, I'm glad that Simba likes them at least. But Simba loves bugs, remember, Simba's the bug hunter. Good job, Simba. Stella says she's a bit disappointed. It is 9.45 a.m. Here's Boo. He's relaxing on the day sofa in his room. He just had breakfast a little while ago. All the cats had their breakfast. And I'm getting ready to leave. Going on an overnight trip, right Boo? So making sure the cats are all set up with everything they need. Their automatic feeders are full. There's fresh water in all the water bowls. The litter boxes have been scooped. All of the security cameras have been set up. And the garbage has been taken out. And the thermostat has been set. And the cats are all ready. Right, Boo? So you know what to do, Boo. You're in charge of looking out the windows. Make sure there's no strange people or animals in the yard, Boo. That's your job, okay? Okay, you're gonna rest a little bit before you start your job, and then if there's anybody, if you see anything weird, Boo, you let me know. You send me some telepathic messages, Boo, okay? Anything weird, you let me know, okay? Okay, I see you later, Boo. I see you tomorrow, Boo. Okay, Bo, tomorrow. So you're going to eat dinner out of your feeder, and you're going to eat breakfast tomorrow out of your feeder, and dinner tomorrow out of your feeder, and then I'll be back, okay? Okay, buddy boy. Okay, buddy boy. Okay, you be be good. Be nice. You have you're with two jobs, Boo, okay? Your first job is to look out the windows, make sure nothing weird's going on, and here's your second job, Boo. This is your new job. Ready? Your new job is to be nice to everybody. Your new job is to be nice to everyone because this morning Boo got in a fight with somebody. I don't know who. Um, it was either Stella or Simba. Your job's to be nice, Boo, okay? Be nice. Okay, I'll see you later, Boo. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Hey, Simba. Simba's relaxing here in the cat tower. And... I'm hoping Simba's going to be fine this time. Last time I had to cut my trip short because Simba was vomiting. 
but he's been good since he had that um, nutritional gel the other day because he had like a hairball issue the other day. So I gave him a little bit of that gel stuff, not the laxatone. I thought that was a little bit too strong. I gave him like the high calorie gel that I used to use for Ditto. And I did not give it to Simba because he needed the high calories. I gave it to him because it has many of the same ingredients that laxatone has, which is you know, just basically oil. Um, I did also give Simba some coconut oil that day. So maybe it was a combination of both of them. Maybe it was one or the other, but fingers crossed um, he hasn't had any more hairball issues since then. So hopefully he will be fine the rest of today and tomorrow. Okay, Simba, you're in charge of bugs. No bugs in the house, okay? Got that one? Keep all the bugs out. Here's Stella. She's downstairs and she's watching birds or squirrels or something. She really likes to do this. And this cat tower is filthy. It needs to be cleaned. It's full of cat hair. Stella, you have a job today and tomorrow. You know what that is, right? You have to make sure everyone gets along, okay? You're in charge of social activities, Stella. Got it? Okay. See you tomorrow. And here's Splash. How you doing, Splashy? Splash, you know what you're in charge of, right? You're in charge of guarding the furniture. In charge of guarding the furniture and you're also in charge of making sure there's no mice or rodents around right splash you make sure they stay outside <laughs> It's 8.45 a.m. Grandma just opened the back door and look what she found. Marty got a mouse. Actually, it's not a mouse, it's a chipmunk. So it looks like Marty takes after her cousin Boo. Boo's favorite meal is chipmunk. Baby raccoons on the patio. There's like two or three of them. And I didn't have the camera. And I had to find the camera. So that's why I didn't really get a good, um, a good shot of them. I was totally shocked to see them. So Boo was looking out the window and I was like, what are you looking at, Boo? And then I saw some movement on the patio. And uh, at first I just thought it was like a possum or a raccoon, but then I saw the babies. I don't know if there was two or three. There was definitely at least two. I don't know if they're going to be coming back, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't have cat food out. Um, I don't have the automatic feeder set up like it used to be. So it used to be that um, I had the automatic feeder set up with cat food for like Hydrox and Ditto during the day or Boo when he was living outside or Stella, Splash and Simba when they're living outside. And uh, you know, it would dispense cat food in the morning for them 
and then it would dispense cat food about an hour before the sun went down and the cats would eat it and whatever the cats did not eat then the raccoons would come and eat and so the raccoons came by now and they're looking at the bird seed and um, I don't have the automatic feeder anymore so they're not going to be getting any leftover cat food and I'm not going to be putting out any uh, cat food or any food for them because I really don't need to attract more wildlife. I don't need any more outside cats uh, moving onto the patio and making themselves a home here. Right, Boo? Four inside cats is it's enough work. Right, Boo? You're a good boy. See, Boo's doing his job. Boo's doing his job. All the cats take their jobs really seriously. Remember, Boo's job is to look outside and let me know if anything weird's going on. Or if there's anyone strange in the yard. Boo says that they're not strange. He says, they're not strange. They're just baby raccoons and a mommy raccoon. Right, Boo? I know it's dark. I don't even know if you could see Boo's silhouette here. Good job, Boo. You did such a good job. You're doing a good job, Boo, okay? Boo says he wants to make sure that the babies are safe and they're taken care of. Boo has a soft spot for babies of any kind. Right, Boo? He likes baby animals. Right, Boo? Let's check on the cat. So here's Boo. Hey, Boo. How are you doing? He's relaxing. He said he was up almost all night 
looking for the baby raccoons to come back. And here's Stella and Simba. They're laying on the bed. Happy cats on the bed. And there's Splash, she's in the penthouse. Hey Splash. Simba has such a fluffy belly. Simba, your belly is so fluffy. It's 3.15 p.m. Let's see what the cats are doing. So here's Stella. And there's Simba. He just took a flying leap from the cat tower. How you doing, Simba? Did you want some pets? Did you want some pets? Were you watching the birds? There's birds outside. I put some bird seed out for the birds. So I had one of my security cameras pointed at the bird seed, like where I put the bird seed. I was going to make a video for the cats to watch, but the battery died on the security camera and I can't even charge it. Like something is seriously wrong with it. It's one of the older cameras that I have. I have quite a few. I have some that are wired and some that are wireless and the ones that are wireless I can move around. So it was one of the wireless ones and it was one of the older wireless ones. So not happy about that. I did order a replacement battery, um, but the manufacturer no longer has the replacement batteries. So I, I bought it on eBay and I'm hoping when it arrives it works and that it's not an issue with the actual camera and that it's only an issue with the battery. Right, Simba? Here's Boo. He's still relaxing. How you doing, Boo? I know you're not sleeping. I know you're faking it because I saw you moving. Yep, you're a fake. You're a faker. It's 8.42 p.m. I just got back from running a whole bunch of errands. Um, I bought these cookies. Uh, these were only like 85 cents or less. They were super cheap and I know I'm not supposed to be doing this, but I put some cookies out for the baby raccoons. I put them under the feeding table because it's raining right now and um, I cut them in pieces so just in case the baby raccoons come by uh, they'll have some cookies. So when I was in Lidl I wanted to buy chicken for the cats but they were completely sold out of chicken so then I went to Aldi and Aldi was also completely sold out of chicken. And then I went to a local supermarket, a stop and shop, and they actually had chicken. So I stocked up for the cats. The cats still have quite a bit of homemade raw food from the last batch that I made last month, but I bought enough chicken for another large batch of food. So when I have to make homemade raw food this month, I already have chicken just in case the chicken shortage gets worse. So this is 4.1 pounds of chicken thighs. These are boneless and skinless. And then I have five pounds of chicken thighs with bone and skin, and another five pounds of chicken thighs with bone and skin. And I have 1.9 pounds of chicken gizzards and hearts and one pound four ounces of chicken livers. So with the chicken livers and the chicken hearts, I usually portion these out before I freeze them. Um, that's what I'll do because I usually use um, a half pound of livers and a half pound of hearts per 10 pounds of meat. Right now I have 15 pounds of meat, so I will portion out um, what I need uh, for that, which will be probably like 12 ounces of the chicken livers and 12 ounces of the hearts. Yeah, so the cats are set as far as chicken for the month. So all of this chicken cost $35. It was a total of $35. And this is going to make about 15 pounds of raw cat food. So the raw cat food will last the cats anywhere from four to six weeks. And they'll be eating it once a day because I've been giving them commercial raw food once a day and then homemade raw food once a day. If there's a problem getting the commercial raw food, then they get this twice a day. So thank you so much to all of the patrons of this channel. Your generous support helps to pay for this cat food. It's 7 a.m. 
I wanted to show you Stella because she was sitting so pretty on this towel with her legs crossed. Stella, you're such a pretty girl. How you doing, Stella? So last night, I got home probably around 9 p.m. By the time I unloaded everything from the car, put everything away, it was like, you know, 9.15 and then uh, the cats were hungry. They had not eaten their dinner yet. So then I put some dinner together for them and they had canned food because I forgot to defrost raw food. And they ate downstairs and Boo loves canned food. So he did not want to eat upstairs. However, Splash, for some reason, refused to eat downstairs and he wanted to eat upstairs. So Splash immediately ran upstairs and what I did was I picked up his plate and I brought it upstairs for him and I gave it to him on the play rug in the living room and he ate his food. And I sat down to eat some food because I had not eaten dinner yet either. I ended up eating like two big bowls of freshly cut watermelon and I relaxed for a little while. So let's say a half hour went by where uh, I just relaxed and I ate some dinner and uh, I turned on the TV and just like watched a little bit of TV. And then because they normally get crunchies at night and it's their schedule, they wanted crunchies. So I said, all right, let me, uh, let me get your little crunchy plates and uh, let me give you some crunchies. So when I did that, I looked at the plate where Splash finished his food, like his paper plate was still there with just a little tiny bit of food left on it. And it was crawling with ants. I was like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. So I had to go and I had to get um, something to deal with the ants. And what I use is the Mrs. Myers cleaning spray. It's an all natural spray and it has essential oils in it. And certain fragrances just stop the ants like dead in their tracks. So that's what I uh, sprayed on the plate and I cleaned the plate up and cleaned the rug underneath it because there were little ants on the rug. And then I had to kind of figure out okay, where's this ant trail coming from? And I traced it back to the window. So in the past, the ants have been coming like through the bottom of the front door, but I've sealed it up really well. So this year, I think they were literally just walking through the window screen. That's the only thing I could think of. Um, the I traced the ant trail like up the wall to the windowsill and to the window. So I'm not happy about that. And I was able to clean up as much as I could. And then I sat there for a while just watching to see, okay, are more ants going to show up? Um, but they didn't. So then I had to like vacuum the whole room and get rid of, you know, everything that was in the vacuum. And I looked this morning, I only saw one stray ant. So I'm hoping that's under control now. It's supposed to rain all day and it actually started raining last night. So I got home just before the rain. And what I've been noticing is that every time it rains is when the ants come out. So I'm not happy about that either. Every single year since I first moved into this house, there's always been ant issues. Some years worse than others. Like the first few years, I didn't have any ants inside. They were only in the lawn. Like so many ant holes in the lawn um, and then I started noticing them in one room and then two rooms and it's just really really horrible but I know they're pretty much all over the neighborhood because I've seen uh, other neighbors um, dealing with them and when I take a walk I see ant holes like in all the sidewalks like any crack in the pavement there's like an ant hole so it's definitely widespread around here. It's really horrible. And uh, I'm not happy with it. Because who wants to be dealing with ants? Not me. Here's Boo. Good morning, Boo. How are you today, Boo? Boo was on watch all night. He was by the window in his room. Here's Simba. Hey Simba, what you doing? Simba says he's ready for breakfast. So this is where all of the ants were. And um, there's a paper because that's where I squashed an ant this morning. And I just have it here just in case I see any more ants. But um, yeah, it was near this cat tower. They were like climbing this wall here. 
and this is the window that I believe they were coming in through. So uh, once it stops raining today, clears up a little bit, I'm gonna go outside and put a bunch of amp baits around. It's almost 9 a.m. Good morning, Simba. And we completely overslept this morning. Simba just woke me up. He jumped on the bed to wake me up because last night there were crazy thunderstorms that rolled through and it was, oh my God, it was so loud. It was like out of nowhere. Everyone was sleeping and then all of a sudden it was like a loud crash of thunder. Like everyone jumped. I almost jumped out of bed, it was that loud. And then I realized that it was thunder. At first you don't even know what it is. You're like, what was that? But then it started raining, like it just started pouring rain right afterward. And then you realize it's thunder. And so everyone was woken up by that. And then a few hours later, we were woken up again by just intense, intense rain. Right, Simba? So, um, yeah, we didn't sleep that good last night. And uh, that's why I overslept today. So we got to get moving. Simba says we got to get moving. Here's Stella, she's taking a bath. Here's Boo, he's been stationed at the window in his room. That's his favorite place to look out lately, especially at night. So here's the window with the ant issue. And what I did yesterday, uh, yesterday evening, I put a bunch of ant bait outside and hopefully that'll keep the ants out there. I just see one now uh, over here. I have to um, squash that ant. Here's Boo. Boo's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's about 5 p.m. and I am here at Boo's favorite cat tower. And as you can see, there's lots of black cat hair in it. It's like all around the edge is black cat hair. And I have this brush that I got at Daiso like a week ago. I bought it specifically to clean these cat towers. I had a brush like this previously. Someone had sent it to me years ago and I just used it on this cat tower. Do you see the big difference? So I cleaned this cat tower with the brush and all I did was I went around the edges like this and then I went around the inside like this and it really, really got a lot of the cat hair up. I don't know if you can see how it's like bunching some cat hair up. That's why I have this glove on because this kind of grosses me out. I'm really happy with how that came out. And I wanna clean this one now too, but Simba has decided he needs to lay on it. The minute I finished, as I was cleaning the other one, Simba decided he needed to lay in the other one. So I got the brush and I was brushing Simba because I was like, well, maybe he just is trying to tell me that he wants to be brushed which obviously he wants to be brushed because he loves being brushed, but I want to clean the cat tower right now. Right, Simba? We're going to clean the cat tower. Good, Simba? You feel good? So it was really hot out today, and I put the air on, the air conditioning, probably like an hour ago. So I have the air conditioning set for like around 80 degrees in the house. So when it gets up to 80, then the air conditioning will kick on. Actually, I think it's 81 degrees. And um, when I came back, I went for a walk and I came back and I saw the thermostat was at 81. And I said, oh, okay, so the air conditioning is going to kick on soon. Let me shut the windows and 
Right now it feels nice with the air on. What are you doing, Simba? Oh, you want me to do your head? <laughs> Here. I'm going to brush your head. That's what you're telling me. Okay. Good. You're handsome, Simba. Your back end is where all the loose hair is. Your back end is where all the loose cat fur is. The cat hair, cat fur, call it whatever you want to call it. I'm squashing your face into the brush. You want me to brush your face? Brush your face, brush your, your head. Okay. Good. Okay, you gonna go in the other one? All right, I just did your head. Don't bite it. There you go, brush your head again. You feel good, Simba? You feel good? Okay, come on, let me do this. Let me do the cat tower, Simba, come on. Come over here. Come over here in this one. Come over here in this one. Come here. Over here, come here. Come in this one over here. Wow, Simba, you're shedding a lot. You're shedding a lot. Well, Simba wants you to know that it's not just Boo's fur in this cat tower. It's also his. So he's taking credit for it, too. He says it's his as well as Boo's. Can you see all the cat hair that's coming off of Simba? Okay, Simba, you gotta get up. Simba, you gotta get up. Okay? Okay, Simba, you good? You good? Okay, look, there's a squirrel. Go look at the squirrel, Simba. Look at the squirrel. See the squirrel outside? You'll see him better from the other cat tower. You get a better view. You get a better view from the other cat towers, Simba. Okay? Okay. Good? Good? Over here. Come on, man. Come here. Come here now. Good boy. Good boy, Simba. You're very smart. Okay, now lay down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Lay down here. Okay. Now let's do this cat tower. Let's see if it'll work, because this one has a lot more cat hair in it. Oh, yeah, see it all? Then there's the bottom part here. It's working pretty well. This grosses me out so much. And then I could do the this flat part, the bottom part. I don't know if you see all the cat hair coming up. And this was at Daiso. This was only a dollar ninety nine. These are just like silicone bristles, but it it does a good job. The shape of it does a really good job of getting into the corners. So see how much cleaner there is versus here? Okay, and there we have it. The cat tower has been cleaned. It's not 100% perfect, but we could say it's about 90% better than it was.
Okay, Simba. Okay, you could go back in the other cat tower now. Simba. Simba, you could move. You could go back in the other cat tower. Simba, you could go back now. Come on. Over here. You kind of come over here? Simba, you want to come here? Want to come in the other tower? Now you're good? You guys want this? Do you want this? Do you want it? Who wants this? You want it? Boo, that's not nice. That's not nice, Boo. Here you go, Stella. Boo, you have to share it. So what I'm realizing is that I need to make two of these at once. But it is, it's long enough for all the cats to share it. How you doing, Splashy?
I'm here with the cats and the cats got a card. Let's open it. Isn't that pretty? There's a black cat and then there's three red birds. This looks like a homemade card. This says, hi LF. I'm very sorry for the loss of Hydrox and Ditto. It's so hard. I'm going through the same journey as Ditto's with my cat, Sam. Sammy and I, we have watched the LF since we found each other. As a new cat mom back when I was eager to know as much as I could about cats and your channel has always good info now with even cat's health. I've been so disappointed not finding sources of info, expectations, descriptions, disease info, and progress, and your channel gave me a lot of information. Some of what have helped me give Sammy a comfortable life for the past five months. Well, thank you very much. I am uh, very happy to hear that uh, Sammy has been comfortable. He is still here at the time I write this to you, and I have been grieving the whole situation during all these months. I can only assume how you are feeling at the moment. Only can offer a big virtual hug and some comfort on that the love we had for our companion will be forever. I recently read that grief is love with nowhere to go. Thanks for all you do for the cats community with your videos and sharing your experiences and your cats with all of us. Much love, Zara Gina and Sam. Thank you very, very much, Zara Gina and Sam, for this lovely card. I'm happy to hear that your cat is still with you. I know, um, you know, dealing with the uh, issue that Ditto had is not fun and it's not easy. And um, I hope your cat is continuing to eat and feeling okay. And I'm hoping that uh, it's a very slow progression and maybe even a reversal of the issue. That would be the best case scenario. That's what I was hoping for Ditto. And uh, unfortunately, um, he took a turn for the worse. So I'm, I'm sending lots of best wishes to both you and to Sammy. And I hope you guys are doing well, stay strong, stay positive, and just take one day at a time. It's 8.30 a.m. Here's Stella. How you doing, Stella? She's relaxing in the cat tower. Here's Boo. Boo's watching birds. There's birds outside. And there's a squirrel outside, Boo. Boo, there's a squirrel outside. Here's Simba. Simba's watching the squirrel from here. Simba, you watching that squirrel? He says he was watching the birds, but then they flew away. They'll come back, Simba. They'll come back. You tired today? It's fish day. Simba, you happy? It's fish day. It's 9 a.m. Stella has decided that she wants an appetizer before breakfast. Who's watching her. Here's Splash. He's downstairs sleeping on the ottoman. It's 9 a.m. and there are three cats on the bed. They're watching the Lucky Ferrell's video that premiered last night. And I was just watching it with them for a little while and we we're watching the tabby cat, the brown tabby that's been in the yard. And a few days ago when I was filming, I mentioned that I thought the tabby's name might be like Savannah or Cheetah or something like that. So when I see the tabby, I've been calling it Cheetah, but I feel like that name does not fit the tabby. And then today when we were watching the video, all of a sudden I heard Lynx, L-Y-N-X, like that kind of big cat. And I was like, oh, I wonder if that's the tabby's name. So I'm gonna try out Lynx with the tabby. Every time I see the tabby, I'll be like, Lynx, and I'll see if that fits. I think that might fit better than Cheetah. 
It's 10.15 a.m. And I just got back from a two-mile walk, and I sat down at the table to eat some breakfast. And Stella and Simba have been pestering me the whole time. Like, I don't know what's going on with them, but they're acting like something is up. Like, either they're guilty of something, or it was like they were trying to tell me about something, because... They don't usually do this. Normally I could sit down and eat and, you know, not have cats basically crawling on my chair while I'm eating and trying to get my attention. And that's what it felt like. So finally I pulled this chair out from the table and Stella went on there and then Simba's right here. And I don't know, they're acting really weird and I don't know why they're acting this weird. This is just abnormal behavior for them. What's going on, boo? Why are you hanging out here in the hallway? What's going on? So this morning, Boo and Simba got into a little fight because Boo was on top of the cat tower in my room and Simba tried to get to the top of the cat tower also and Boo didn't like it, so Boo smacked him pretty hard. Simba was insulted by that. Normally at this time of day, the cats are usually hanging out on the bed or by the window smelling the air. So I don't know, maybe they got in a big fight while I was out walking. It's 11.40 a.m. The cats are back on their normal routine. Simba and Stella are relaxing on the bed. How you doing, Simba? You look happy. You happy? Look at Simba's floofy belly. Simba, you got a very floofy belly. There's Splash. Splash is relaxing on top of the cat tower. You're an open window. I'm surprised he's not in the penthouse. That's usually where he is this time of day. Here's Boo. Boo's doing his job, looking out the window. It's 4 p.m. Let's check in on the cats again. So Simba and Stella are still laying on the bed. They've just changed directions. I wonder where Splash is. Did he go up into the penthouse? There's Splash. He's in the penthouse. And here's Boo. Hello, Boo. You sleep in here? You're on the day sofa. Okay, you can continue your nap. You don't have to get up. Okay? You don't have to get up. I'm just checking on you, Boo. 
Okay. It's about 10.30 a.m. and I'm trying to teach Boo and Simba how to share this window. Because Simba was in the window and Boo wanted to go in the window, but he wouldn't come up here because Simba was up here. Then Simba jumped down and Boo jumped up. And I just put some bird seed out on the patio. I don't know if you can see it, there's a cardinal. Um, there's two cardinals, a male and a female. I know you can't see it because this camera doesn't do good through windows. So Boo's gonna be happy now because he was looking out the back door a little while ago. And I was like, oh no, Boo, there's no bird seed out there. And there was a dove outside looking for some seed. So I find that the cats really like to uh, watch the birds when I put the bird seed out. Be nice, Boo. You share, share, share. Simba says he doesn't trust Boo. He does not trust Boo. Boo gave Simba a very good sniffing today. Boo sniffed Simba all over. Maybe if I put Simba on top of the cat tower, Boo might get mad though because Simba's up higher then. I'm gonna go find Simba. So Simba's in the cat tower. He has a good view from up there. Boo's by the window. There's no reason for them not to get along. Simba's being very cautious. He's saying, Boo, am I okay here? Boo, everything's okay, Boo. Everything is okay, Boo. Everything is fine. You sharing. I'm trying to teach him the word share. Share. You share. Boo, we're sharing. Boo, we're sharing, okay? We're sharing. Simba can help you. I know it's your job, Boo, but Simba can help you. Because there's no bugs in the house right now. So he can help you look out the window. Okay, good, Boo? Okay, good. Good job. Stay calm. You're in charge. You're the boss, Boo. Simba's just helping you. He's your assistant, okay? Simba looks so fluffy compared to Boo. They're watching the Cardinals. Those two Cardinals are having a blast. Okay, Boo, stay calm. Just hang out here and stay calm, okay? Enjoy the breeze. Stay calm. Okay, just stay calm. Okay, be a good boy. Just stay calm, okay? There's the cardinal, it's back. Boo and Simba say they like it when the birds visit. I have to move that thing on the wall. Simba's tail keeps hitting the cat that's hanging on the wall. It's making Boo nervous. Oh, both of the cardinals are back, plus a few other birds. I had a security camera outside pointed at the bird feeder and I don't know what happened, but the battery died in it. I had to order a new battery. So I have to test the battery that I got. I don't know if it's a battery issue. I was just hoping it's a battery issue. If it's a camera issue, I can't do anything because they don't make the cameras anymore. Unless I can somehow find one used or um, like an old model, new in box, that kind of thing. Okay, 
Okay, kids, have fun looking at the birds, okay? I gotta get back to work. Let's take a look at what the cats got today. So I went to the local pet store and picked up a month's supply of cat food. So I got some raw cat food. Um, I got a bag of the Nature's Variety Instinct Raw Chicken Bites. And then I got two bags of Primal Nuggets. One bag is turkey and sardine. The other is chicken and salmon. And yes, one bag says it's for dogs, but that's okay because the ingredients are pretty much exactly the same as the ingredients in the cat version of that variety. The problem is that the local pet store only has two flavors of Primal Nuggets for cats. One is chicken and salmon and the other is beef and salmon and the cats don't like the beef and salmon. So if I want to get them more variety than just chicken and salmon, I just get them the uh, the nuggets for dogs and there's not a whole lot of difference at all. The main difference is that additional taurine is usually added to the cat food versus the dog food when it comes to high quality raw foods. So I got these three bags and the cats have commercial raw food once a day and once a day they also have homemade raw food. So that's how I make these bags last through a whole month. The cats also got two bags of Dr. Elsie's Ultra Cat Litter. I normally go through about three or four of these bags a month, probably four bags a month. I just picked up two bags because I need to go to either PetSmart or Petco to pick up some more canned food for Boo because he really likes the wellness canned food. And I figured I'll get some of the litter there and um, give them some business also. I also picked up some more freeze-dried raw. On the left, we have a bag of the Instinct Raw Boost mixers. And Stella, Splash, and Simba like those. That's what they get in their automatic feeder if I'm away for an overnight trip. And on the right, we have Dr. Marty Nature's Feast. Biologically balanced nutrition, essential wellness, poultry, natural freeze-dried raw complete meal. And the cats have never tried that before, so that's what they're gonna try this month. Last month they tried the Boss Cat frozen raw food, and this month they're trying the Dr. Marty Nature's Feast freeze-dried raw food. I really like the ingredients in there. They're really clean ingredients, so um, we'll see if the cats like it. I picked up three packages of churros because we don't have any churros in the house. I got tuna with scallop, chicken with shrimp, and tuna with salmon. And these I like to have on hand in case the cats have an upset stomach or if they're not feeling well. Sometimes if they're not feeling well, they won't even eat squeeze ups, but they'll eat these. So I just wanted to make sure I had some in the house. That's why I got three of these. And then I got some more canned food for the cats. This is their favorite canned fish food. So we have Earthborn Holistic Harbor Harvest which is salmon and whitefish dinner with vegetables and gravy, and also Earthborn Holistic Monterey Medley, which is skipjack tuna and grilled mackerel dinner in gravy. So, so they have some kind of canned fish food once a week um, for breakfast and for dinner. And out of all the canned fish foods that they've tried, this seems to be their favorite. So that's why I've picked up some more um, and I've been giving them each like a quarter can of the Harbor Harvest, a quarter can of the Monterey Medley, so they get a half can in total. So this is everything that I got other than the frozen food, which I already put away, and the cat litter, which I put away also. And I would like to thank all of the channel's patrons for their support this month. And it's their support that paid for all of this food for the cats. So thank you guys very much for your very generous support. I would like to give a shout out to Abril, C.R. Barboni, and Debbie Kirby. Thank you so much for your patronage this month and your generous support. Thank you for watching this Lucky Ferals video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.